Through the Looking Glass Ruins is the fifth episode of the second season of The Owl House and 24th overall. In it, Gus finally gets a plot to his own where he tries to befriend some cool kids from a different school. Meanwhile, Luce is trying to figure out about the past humans on the Boiling Isles with the help of Amity. Also, Maddie's there. Lulo is out of commission this episode. The demon hunters are trying to deal with the Not Wampa from Adventures in the Elements. Braxis makes his first appearance in a while, getting saved by the cool kids. And this is the episode that states that he's Warden Raph's kid. The cool kids are from Glandis, one of the other magic schools we were told about in First Day. The plant magic one is named Angmar. That's a Lord of the Ring reference. He likes butterflies. And he's played by an actor who identifies as queer. The abomination track guy is Gavin, played by a gay Indian man. And the construction coven girl is Bria, played by Felicia Day, who's been in a thousand things, but I will always know her as Veronica from Fallout New Vegas. They're eventually with Mapholomew, who hasn't been out of the background since something ventured. He also appears to have gone for a growth spurt and moved schools. He references that he has an older brother, who we have met earlier, but I'll explain that when we actually get to the reveal at the end of the season. Either way, they're going to the Looking Glass Ruins. For those who don't know, a looking glass is an old-timey way of saying mirror, which is why it's called Alice Fruit a Looking Glass instead of Alice Fruit a Mirror. Luz hooks Gus up with some glyphs, and she goes to the library. The search results are How to Cure Parasitic Something, Hexes for Exes, which might be a movie or something, Hexide or St. Epiderm, referring to the third magic school, How to Survive a Giraffe, referring to the giraffes being from the Bullion Isles, Hungry What Eat, Honey Basilisk, Inhuman. This is oddly the only appearance of Ida in this episode, making this the first episode where Ida does not make a speaking appearance. I think I forgot to reference this last episode, but it is revealed that some stuff sneaks into the Boiling Isles, mostly garbage. Like Planet 51. Amity agrees to let this unibrow kid summon Satan. Amity with her hair down. Edric got a date. Amity and Luce go into the archives. And there's a lot of cute hand-holding. Luz says in Spanish, don't worry, everything will be fine. Gus is able to amplify the glyphs, because illusion magic can amplify stuff, as seen in First Day. Turns out that the cool kids might not be as cool as we thought, because Glandis is kind of a battle royal school. And they're grave robbing for the Galder Stones, which give magic, except for illusions, a super boost. The names on the graves are actually members of the staff. Then they get attacked by a Pokemon. Meanwhile, Lumity, Deadwardian Era is a reference to Edwardian Era. They find a diary, but a mouse ate it. They get caught by a paper dragon and kicked out. The two have a real moment. Luce slicks her hair back like in Grom and says in Spanish, nothing will work unless I make it work. Back with Gus, he makes a pretty lady Pokemon because he wanted to do that trick and escape an expulsion. But it turns out the Pokemon is actually just another illusionist, so the Glandis kids tied him up. Maddie has a change of heart, and they decide to get back by uh, traumatizing Bria, the wonderful family friendly magic of Disney. Looks like you're about to get in big trouble with Mom. Ow. I think it looks great, but yeah, maybe don't tell her I helped. I'm sorry about everything. I'd understand if you never want to see me again. Uh... You so fucking. Precious when you smile. Yeah. I absolutely love Amity's lavender hair. Light purple is my favorite color, and I think it looks so well with her casual outfit. And symbolically, it's really nice because it's her doing what she wants to do with her own hair, rather than her mom forcing her to do her hair like hers. Also, the back of her library card is the weeping star, and it's the lesbian colors. So yeah, Luce helped her get her job back, and it turns out the mouse that ate the journal is actually a projector mouse. And it's able to project Philip Wittebay's diary about his journeys through the Boiling Isles. Don't worry. You always have a way of sneaking into people's hearts. Oh, move, sister. <sighs> uh, okay, good to see you. Farewell forever. Why did I do that? 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 And the Phantom goes wild! But for real, this is a great episode. Gus finally gets some time to shine, which is nice to see, even if it gets overshadowed by the Lumity stuff. With Amity putting her job on the line that helped Luce. Luce indirectly helping Amity express herself, helping her find the confidence to go her own way away from her parents. We begin the Philip Wittebe storyline, with Luce trying to figure out how to make her own portal door, 
But the real big bombshell is the Illumity Kiss. It's only a peck on the cheek, but this is still great representation because we got this in only episode 5. A romantic evolving relationship between two people of the same gender. Usually getting to any sort of kissing is like last episode things, so I'm over the moon at this. But the stuff around it is also really good. I'm glad to see Gus having his own plot with the Glandis kids. Anything to do with magic in the show is cool. The Lumity stuff. Overall, 10 out of 10.